Welcome to the program today. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Our guest today is returning to speak with us, Mr. Yanni Papanikolaou. He holds a Master of Health Science in Public Health Nutrition, and he's a Ph.D. candidate at the University of Toronto focusing on nutrition and brain health. He's here to talk about uh, two new studies that uh, he published in Nutrients and Nutrition Journal. Both of these studies uh, highlight nutrition benefits associated with eating grain foods. Welcome back to Health Professional Radio, Yanni. Thanks for having me back, Neil. Thanks for returning, man. Um, it's It's been a while since we spoke with you last. Some uh, new developments in the world of grains, yeah? Yeah, we've just published uh, last month, actually, two new studies, one in the Nutrition Journal and one in the journal called Nutrients, mm-hmm. and they were both uh, uh, looking at children and adolescents, mm-hmm. and in the first study, we were interested in answering the question, how do American children consume grain foods? Mm-hmm. And overall, we found that most grain patterns were associated with better nutrient intakes and, and improved overall diet quality. Mm-hmm. Now. A key finding uh, was linked to the new 2015 Dietary Guideline for Americans, and in these guidelines, the experts have identified 10 shortfall nutrients in the American diet, huh. and that is, goes for both kids and adults, okay. um, and these shortfall nutrients are nutrients children are not getting enough of. So. From our data, overall, we see that including grains in your diet, and this includes both whole and non-whole grain foods, Mm -hmm. leads to higher consumption of many of these 10 10 shortfall nutrients, including fiber, magnesium, folate, and iron. Mm. Um, Those are the ones that are on the higher level of the shortfall nutrient intake. So that's vitamin D, fiber, uh, calcium, and potassium. Uh, Then folate has been uh, triggered as uh, or labeled as a shortfall nutrient, Uh, iron, uh, magnesium. um, When you're talking about this this better overall nutrient intake, uh, and, you know, you say it's across the board with adolescents as well as, as adults. Um, when it comes to the younger, uh, the younger population, are these kids, um, I guess, are they going to benefit as adolescents if their nutrient intake is, uh, I guess, locked in with the introduction of all of these, uh, nutrients early on? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's, there's data that actually shows that, uh, dietary habits that are, uh, 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 built in the early years do carry on into adolescence and for the most part do carry on into adulthood and the elderly years. Uh, so what you learn uh, from your parents um, in terms of uh, diet and nutrition uh, tends to carry through. And there's also data on the reverse. Uh, parents who are overweight or obese tend to have children who grow up to be overweight or obese. No. So, uh, okay. And that's not, that's not a genetic thing either, or is it? No, I mean a lot of. Um, I mean there are uh, there are cases where genetics do play a role, uh, but for the most part, um, a lot of the uh, effects that you're you're seeing in the American popu- in the American and Canadian populations is based on environmental influences. So uh, a lot of the overweight and obesity that we see in our kids is uh, stems from uh, overconsumption and overconsumption of the wrong foods. Do you find that where you are purchasing your food from, as local as opposed to uh, big supermarkets or or big box stores, and certainly fast food has to be a no-no, where do you see uh, your best source to get these nutrients, especially as as an adolescent? Well, in our in both of our studies, the data that we're looking at is from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. So this is data that's collected by the U.S. government every two years, and it looks at what children and adolescents and adults are actually consuming. Um, so it's coming from local markets. It's coming from uh, fast food uh, restaurants. Um, so it's coming from a, an assortment of places. We so our study didn't necessarily um, isolate the different where the different grains foods are coming from per se um, but what we're seeing overall irrespective of where the food is coming from there are several benefits associated with consuming different types of grain foods um, and I must tell you in our second study we looked at uh, sources of energy and nutrients from different grain foods from, from grain foods altogether and then from different grain foods and we found that 
Certain grain foods, in particular breads, rolls, and tortillas, ready to eat cereals and quick breads, uh, are meaningful contributors, mm -hmm. again, of folate, iron, thiamine, niacin, and fiber, um, as mentioned uh, earlier. What do you think the long term effect, I mean, other than, you know, possible obesity, what do you think the long term effect of, um, I guess, getting, I guess, half the intake? Can you offset? some of these effects and not get the full intake, not have, I guess, the optimal intake, is, are there extra steps that you need to take? Um, one of the nutrients that we saw um, that was, so for example, fiber intake was greater uh, in five of the seven grain patterns that we examined. Uh, so if I take, can take a step back, the, the so we, we identified within the research seven grain patterns mm -hmm. that kids are predominantly consuming. So one of them is crackers and salty snacks. Another one is yeast, breads, and rolls, cakes, cookies, and pies, cereals. Uh, so that would be like ready-to-eat cereals, mm -hmm. uh, so like your cornflakes, your Fruit Loops kind of uh, cereals, uh, pasta, cooked cereals, which would be like an oatmeal and rice, mm -hmm. uh, quick breads, and then pancakes, waffles, and French toast. So if a child was identified as being pre as predominantly consuming yeast breads and rolls for example that didn't mean that that was the only grain food that they were consuming but it, their predominant uh, grain uh, source was coming from that category so we took all those seven categories and compared them uh, individually to a category we found for about five percent of the u.s uh, kids and adolescent population that consume no grain foods and for and we saw that in five of the seven grain patterns examined uh, kids who had grains in their diet had higher fiber intakes. Um, now, fiber is a nutrient of public health concern as identified by the dietary guidelines, and it plays a key role in digestive health, um, an area that you don't hear talked about very often in the media is constipation. Constipation is a big problem uh, in children. Um, and as a parent, I hear other parents talking about it, uh, especially with the younger children. Um, and it's actually something that can be easily resolved by having more fiber in the diet. In your opinion, why do you think that uh, there is more uh, over-the-counter remedies for constipation? And it is a, a big problem. There are many, many commercials that deal with constipation. Mm -hmm. yep. Why aren't there more commercials dealing with, hey, taking some fiber? There are a few out there, but the overwhelming majority are for over-the-counter products, not better grain intake. Yeah, and I, I think... A large part of that is um, a lack of consumer awareness. I think uh, consumers are quick. They're looking for that quick fix, and I think they think over-the-counter uh, uh, supplements or remedies are going to help uh, alleviate the problem. What they're not realizing is that it's it's, it's a band-aid effect. It's not looking. It's not fixing it long term. Um, and by uh, and, and perhaps that means the industry needs to do a better job of educating consumers. Um, I think that educating moms, dads uh, out there, uh, and perhaps getting even schools and teachers involved on the importance of things like fiber in the diet and how it plays a, a, a key part in digestive health, I think that will go a long way. Now, where can our listeners go online and get some more information about these, uh, these two new studies? Uh, if both studies are available online, they're published in open access journals, which means that they're available to the public. The first journal is called Nutrition Journal, uh, and if you Google Nutrition Journal, um, the latest uh, issue will pop up. And then if you put in my name, uh, Papa Nicolau, uh, that's P A P A N I K O L A O U. Um, <laughs> it's a tricky one. Um, uh, the article will pop up, uh, as with uh, putting my name, uh, Grains, uh, in, a, in a standard Google search would also give you all the research that uh, has been published. Well, I thank you for uh, coming back and talking with us today, Yanni. Thank you, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, with Yanni Papanikolaou. He is the vice president at Nutritional Strategies, where he leads and authors research in nutrition. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud.